hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel today guys i'll be checking out this interesting video from sky news australia and it's titled douglas murray reacts to guyana's president slamming bbc host over climate change you guys i'm super excited for this if you're here to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and without much ado let's see what this video is all about and on the bbc uh, i want you to watch this exchange between the president of guyana dr efan ali and bbc journalist stephen saku it's more than two billion tons of carbon emissions will come from your seabed from those reserves and be released into the atmosphere. I, I don't know if you as a head of state went to the COP in Dubai. Let me stop Dubai. you right there. Let me stop you right there. <laughs> Do you wow. know that Guyana has a forest forever that is the size of England and Scotland combined? A forest that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon. A wow. forest that we have kept alive. A forest that we have kept alive. Does that give you the right? No, does no, that no, no, give I, you that, the right that, to release that all of this right? carbon? Does from that give you the right to, to lecture us on climate change? I am going to lecture you on climate change. Hmm. Douglas, the whole thing was superbly entertaining and, and illuminating. Very entertaining. Uh, fancy giving a smug global warming lecture to the president who's leading a country with the fastest growing economy in the world. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I, I've, I've been interviewed by Stephen Sack in the past myself. And that, that, that's his manner, is this, this endlessly um, uh, tedious, aloof BBC sort of manner. And they, 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 they sort of always think they're really doing brilliantly. Uh, yeah, like him at, at, they want to probing. lecture everybody. In, fact, in actual fact, as on this occasion, they're actually very boring and they're not <laughs> getting to the facts at all. Yeah. Um, thank goodness Irfan Ali did. It, it, it's it's a very telling uh, exchange, and I'm pleased it went viral this week. Uh, but it's a telling exchange for several reasons. But the most important is the presumption that underlies mm. the BBC interviewer's question. The presumption that we, with our COP uh, climate summits all know what's best and that you uh, have to just get on board with it uh, you know you have to fly to the cop summits do your duty and fly back and do what you're told mm. and here is something that completely breaks that narrative um, I'm, I was delighted to see it and uh, delighted to see somebody standing up to this. And it, it's a hectoring and a bullying way of going about things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe there's, I always think that, you know, you should go into any exchange on the presumption the person you're speaking with might have something to tell you. And yeah. only the BBC interviewer and that type of journalist goes in thinking, I'm going to go to tell this person, this head of state, how to behave, what to think, what to do. It's. I'm glad it, it ended. didn't see it coming. Yeah, if, if you watch the uh, introduction to the interview that he gives, uh, you know what angle he's going to take. You know, he's wondering uh, whether this enormous oil reserves is a blessing or a curse i mean this is a poor south american country guess what mm. it is it's an enormous blessing is what it is um now i want to ask you about the latest annual world happiness report wow you guys what are your thoughts on that video with guyana's president and the bbc reporter do you like the way the president shut him down and wouldn't even let him finish what he was about to say let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below because most of these mainstream media think they know it all and they can dictate to others what to do but i love that this man stood up to him and said it to his face that he doesn't even know what he's talking about but let me know what you guys think leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and let's continue watching you guys um it was released recently and for the first time America fell out of the top 20 and this was all due to the unhappiness of young people. Those under 30 are miserable, it seems. Uh, so the US is now ranked 23 overall in the world. But when you look at just the people who are age 60 and over, America comes in 10th place. 
globally. But when you look at the under 30s, Douglas, they're ranked 62nd in the world. Why is there such a gulf between young and old? Why are young people who've grown up in, in an age of peace and prosperity and equality so miserable? It's very interesting. I, I'm slightly sceptical always of happiness indexes, but uh, they tend to uh, mm. produce a finding that uh, people are happiest in the world in Bhutan and um, uh, unhappy <laughs> everywhere else. Uh, I, uh, nothing against Bhutan, but I, I, uh, I'm a little sceptical of some of the methodology. Uh, this, however, does ring very true. Uh, and there's a couple of things I think that could be going on here. Uh, the, the first, the, the, the ungenerous uh, uh, assessment would be that young Americans have got a perception problem, that they are perceiving the world incorrectly. Mm. And if that That's was the point. case, you know, then what they need to be uh, asked is, among other things, compared to what? When you say you're unhappy here in America, where 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 do you think people are happy? Have you seen the mm -hmm. rest of the world? Have you seen what other countries That's are like? Mm -hmm. Have you have, have you actually got your perception of the world out of kilter? You know, is the fact that your iPhone um, went down for a couple mm -hmm. of minutes mm -hmm. earlier today something that caused you stress? Imagine. And might you not have that all out of joint, considering that you have a device in your hand that nobody had in human history until until mm -hmm. now? Um, but the second possibility is actually it's not a misperception problem. And the gulf you describe, Rita, between the uh, the over 60s and uh, and the people in their 20s and so on actually does point to one thing, which which I think the American government and Western governments in, in, in general need to pay attention to, which is that is that the inability, and I've written about this in the past, the inability to accrue capital among uh, young mm. American, uh, actually, uh, same thing with young Brits and same thing with young Australians, does have a consequence. Um, nobody in uh, their parents' or grandparents' generation had it That's easy, all. far yeah. from it. But uh, the, the, the way in which, in which uh, all the sorts of things like quantitative easing, uh, money printing and inflation and much more has just eaten away at the ability to accrue capital is one thing I think that does actually cause genuine distress and 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 serious doubt in a lot of young people if you accrue capital you can get onto the housing ladder if you get onto the housing ladder you have a stake in your economy and in the market I've been very worried for a long time that what we have a young people who are expected to be capitalists but who can't accrue capital and um you know the market needs to work for them as well and i think this might be a demonstration just one one reminder uh, that it's not working at the moment you guys douglas murray has said nothing but the truth in this video i don't know why the young americans are unhappy because right now i can say they have almost everything at their disposal unlike people from the past who work their butt out to achieve something for themselves but let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below do you agree with douglas mary take on this i really want to hear your thoughts on this one what do you think is making the young americans unhappy leave it in the comment section and let's wrap this video up you guys now, before you go, you've just spent a couple of weeks in Australia. You no doubt would have picked up on the growing culture of self-loathing among the political left here, similar to the US and the UK. Um, we've got folks here who very much subscribe to a black armband view of, uh, of our history. They think Australia Day is not worth celebrating and they call it Invasion Day. And this week, we selected one of these people, Sam Mostyn, as the Australian Head of State. Yes, our new Governor General uh, has posted about uh, 80,000 years of Australian history with the vapid hashtags Invasion Day and always was always will be. Douglas, her appointment as Governor General has been called an insult to mainstream Australians, but I've got to say, she is a media darling. It's extraordinary, Rita. I picked up on this uh, in recent weeks in Australia. This way in which uh, the general public are being told to feel uh, guilt for things they did not do. Um, to have culpability for things they're not guilty of. Nobody's been guilty of. 
Um, and what we really have in these sorts of figures are people, they don't feel, <laughs> my friend Lionel Shriver corrected me on this some time ago, and I'll follow her correction. It's interesting that people like this new governor general, they actually don't feel bad about themselves. They love themselves. They absolutely <laughs> adore the position they get to by telling everyone else in australia that they must feel badly about themselves but she gets to positions of prominence by trying to tell everyone else to feel bad and feel guilty and much more it's just a bully's <laughs> tactic she happens to have worked out the way up mm -hmm. in this era um but i think you know i was very struck in australia by this the demoralization that i saw and i heard about from a lot of of good regular people about precisely things like this and people need to realize you did nothing wrong yeah. you've done nothing wrong nobody alive did anything wrong and if somebody comes along and tells you to feel guilt about hmm. something you didn't do go and yeah. tell them where to go oh mm -hmm. absolutely i know so many people who feel deeply insulted, hurt by things like always was, always will be invasion day because they love this country. And these yeah. uh, this sort of rhetoric has become normalised. In fact, it, it's been uh, treated as, as the uh, virtuous way to feel about the country. And, and it really, there's so many people who are self-censoring and not saying that this makes them feel uncomfortable and this is not how they see their own country. Uh, Douglas Murray, always a pleasure. Thank you for your time tonight. Great pleasure. Thank you. Wow, you guys, that was such an interesting video. I really learned so much from listening to Douglas Murray as always. But let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.